بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله in this session we continue our discussion about the second seven year of Tarbiya and this uh, will complete our discussion about this stage and then inshallah next session we will talk about the third seven years one of the things that we need to observe in this period is how to deal with media and especially social media in the past, TV, newspapers, magazines, even in the early years, internet were like unexpected guests. So sometimes without you inviting them, they were in your home. But now it has reached a point that Sometimes they are more present in your home than yourself. They are more affecting your children than yourself. It's very uh, sensitive issue. For sure, we can regulate, we can control. Uh, for example, there is no need to give a smartphones to our children in very early stage of life. Initially, they don't need to have any phone, and later they can have just a simple phone to contact home if they need help, you know, if you want to check, they are all right. There is no need everyone has a smartphone, there is no need everyone has a laptop. Depends on the age requirement, and little by little, we can, you know, when we are sure that they know how to use it, we can upgrade. But we cannot altogether eliminate social media and internet uh, from our homes from beginning to the end. We should regulate, we should control, we should have a plan. So we want to mention some points here. I had a lecture or maybe two lectures about you know, how we should uh, use uh, cyber space. And also I have a paper about uh, e-ethics. So maybe you find them also useful. The first point that we need to mention is that if we want to have responsible use of social media by our children when they should have access not before that of course but when there is the time that they should have access and we want them to have this responsible use so that the whole family should have responsible use and should be you know God fearing in this uh, it's, it's not possible that for example father or mother or elder brother sibling or sister, you know, they use internet and social media irresponsibly and expect this child, you know, to be very, you know, controlled, very uh, moderate in using social media. So we need to be very careful. If father, mother, when they watch movie or they watch, you know, internet or website, and you know whether you like it or not. David realize, would realize what they watch. You cannot always say, okay, they are not in this room. I watch. All of a sudden, they come, or sometimes you forget to switch off. They are there. So we need to observe very pious, God-fearing usage of internet, social media movies, TV, by ourselves. 
So even if someone, God forbid, is not careful about himself or herself, for the sake of their children, they have to be careful. Even maybe something for your age is okay, but for their age is not okay. So you have to be very careful. So we all together need to avoid anything which is not good for them. Even, for example, some of the things are not a matter of haram, but are useless, waste of time. Our children should learn not to waste their time by watching things which are not useful. If it's something that gives some kind of energy, it's kind of relaxation, it's fine. But if it's just waste of time, no. So we have to be very careful. And the second thing is that we should plan to have a usage of these uh, you know, media as a family. So if your child wants to watch something, you think it's useful, watch with your child. We together watch something. We together listen something. We together read something as entertainment, as in learning, as seeking you know, information, etc. So this is very helpful. And also, please don't put TV in children's room. Actually, my advice is, in, is that in no room other than the common room, there must be TV, if there is need to be TV, to have TV. I have Christian friends that they don't have TV in their home. Don't be surprised. Some, in some countries, TV is not really good. In some countries, maybe it's mixed. In some countries, maybe it's more good, sometimes more bad. So, if you have to have the TV, just one TV in the common room. If you don't put it in your own bedroom, they don't expect to have it in their own bedroom. There is one in common room, everyone uses together. If possible also, if they want to use computer, it should be a desktop where other people can also see and watch. There is no need to be here, you know, something secret. If we do the same, they also learn the same. Is it a deep common room, is it a study room? All people can go there. So we have to be very careful about this. And ask your friends, ask you know, member, committee members, search to find useful programs, useful uh, things, movies, you know, etc. to watch, maybe games to play together so that you don't take risk or just wait for something that comes up by itself. And the third thing is that try to find also a good alternative. So instead of just watching a you know, game or football match on TV for hours and hours, I'm not saying to eliminate it, you, you should plan for it, but at least have other alternatives. For example, Sport, in uh, real sense, not watching the sport. Go with your children to park or somewhere to play or with other families to play. Go to nature, go to you know, mountains, go to near river, wh wh whatever is available. Offer good things as alternative because it's not working to say, don't do this and then you don't offer anything. There should be something good to replace that. The last point for the second seven years is about sexual uh, tarbiyah. What do we mean? We mean that this is the stage that we need to be very careful about their sexual orientation for sure, they develop understanding and maybe some desires. Such that things become attractive to them in this age. This is very natural. We don't need to uh, speed up. We don't need to rush. Unfortunately, in modern culture, uh, either on the streets in t or on 
the movies, etc., and sometimes in the schools, they just rush and they make children exposed to uh, sexual, you know, things much earlier. There is no need to rush. This comes in its own time. We need to prepare them for that. We need to be aware of that. And we need to prevent anything that can cause problem. They should have a clear identity of their own gender. So this is why it's very important. Girls mix with each other, boys get mixed with each other, they play together, they, uh, the girls know more, know more about women, uh, boys know more about men, so that the orientation becomes more and more clear. And also they realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for everything in our life. There is no uh, accident. There is no chance that you know, we have sexual desires or sexual attractions. There is a reason, there is a wisdom behind it. But this should be approached with care, with taqwa, and in Islamic way, which is marriage. Everything should be limited to marriage. When they reach the level of maturity, physically, mentally, spiritually, and they can be responsible for their choices, they can let another person to you know, rely on them and make the other person happy, they marry, and their happiness comes. And then together they can house children. They can welcome children to this world. So, there is nothing outside marriage for satisfaction of sexual desires. Even looking at namahram, strangers, is to be avoided. R you know, reading magazines or, I don't know, watching sites, read movies, which can be stimulating, should be avoided. Everything should be clean, tayyib, and its own time with its own conditions. So, one of the things that we find in Islamic culture is that how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Ahlul Bayt dealt with such issues, whether for their own family members or for others. For example, I want to share with you this story. A young man went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he said, Oh Rasulullah, do you give me permission for zina? Na'udhu billah. For fornication, adultery, fornication. Rasulullah didn't, you know, get angry and shout at him, although some people who were around were very upset and, you know, they were very shocked, you know, how he asked Rasulullah for permission. But Rasulullah asked him to go closer. And that person went and sat next to the Prophet. And Rasulullah with uh, kindness and love told him, do you like someone have fornication with your mother? Do you want someone to have fornication with your sister, for example? So he asked these questions and the young person said, no. no. So Rasulullah said, other people said, don't want this. So if you don't want someone to have this with your mother or sister or daughter, then you should not expect to have right to do this with other people's mothers or daughters or sisters. So this man, who was an honest person, then realized, yes, he didn't pay attention to this aspect of this. It's not something just between you and that woman, even if that woman is, uh, you know, okay. What about all the family who would be affected? They have also rights in this. So. This person then uh, realized that 
you know, that was a mistake. And then Rasulullah put his hand on the chest of this young person and prayed for him. And he said, Oh Allah, please purify his heart, forgive his sins, and protect him from lacking chastity and iffah. And that person from that moment on was someone who said that fornication was the most disliked thing in my will. So Rasulullah didn't avoid this discussion and say, you know, why you ask me this? This is obvious. He kindly talked to this person, clarified for him. He didn't just say it's haram. He tried to clarify and also he prayed for him and then you see how this person was saved and changed another thing in addition to this method that we explained that you with kindness you explain to your children is esta'adha to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give refuge or shelter to your children from temptations of shaitan. Esta'adha is a very important concept in, Quran, in the Quran and Islamic culture. Not only Islamic culture, all divine traditions. We find it in the history of the prophets. Inshallah, I will mention something about Lady Mary, about Yusuf al-Nabi Nawal so it really works. Uh, it's uh, quite some time that I'd love to give, inshallah, some lectures on Esta'ada in English. I had, uh, I think, three lectures in Farsi recently in Stockholm, about a year ago. And inshallah, I hope in English soon we can have a series on Esta'ada. It's very important. It's not just something we do for the sake of Sawab and getting reward. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim Yes, we get reward. It's a zikr. But it really works. It's a kind of protection. It's a kind of bringing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to defend you. It's very important. So, Quran says in Surah A'raf, Verse 200 and Surah Fussilat, verse 36. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim wa imma yanzghannaka min ash-shaytan al-nazghun fasta'idh billah innahu sami'un alim wa imma yanzghannaka min ash-shaytan al-nazghun fasta'idh billah innahu sami'un alim This ayah is repeated two times. When shaitan wants to bring temptation to you, ask Allah for refuge. Truly Allah is hearing and knowledgeable. He hears your call, your request for protection. He's aware of temptations of shaitan. He knows everything, alim. He knows what is happening. He knows how to help. وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغُونَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Look at some cases from Quran and see how istaadah worked. So we should always ask Allah to protect our children and say, please give them refuge. When we read the story of Prophet Yusuf Allah Nabi Salam. We find that Zuleikha had prepared everything to invite Yusuf Salam to haram relation. In Surah Yusuf, verse 23, Allah says, وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابِ وَقَالَتْ حَيْتَ لَكَ she clear, completely locked up all the doors and said, come on, hurry. Or in some interpretations, I am prepared for you. So, 
come on, hurry, or means I am prepared to hayyat to. But what did Yusuf alayhi salam say? That prophet, he said, qala ma'adhallah. He said, I ask God for protection. He didn't go for haram, obviously, but he didn't also rely only on his own power. As we say, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So he asked Allah to give him protection. Ma'adhallah means asta'idu billah, a'udhu billah. I ask Allah to give, me, uh, to give me and provide me with shelter and protection. Or for example, when women were asking him or expecting him to have an affair with them, how did Yusuf manage to protect himself? He asked Allah for help. And he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O oh Allah, if you don't protect me, then I might, you know, have inclination towards them. He said, Qala Rabbis sajnu ahabu ilayya mimma yad'oonani ilay. To be put in prison is better for me, is, is preferable to what they call me to. If you don't keep away their plot, their plans, I would be inclined towards them. And become one of the ignorant people. So Yusuf asked Allah for help. This is Surah Yusuf, verse 33. Also in verse 53, the famous ayah, وَمَا أُبَرَّعُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءُ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي I don't say I am very good. I don't do tasky of myself, you know, to say I'm pure, I'm good. Nafs commands to do bad things. Nafs أَمَّارَةٌ If your nafs is not transformed into nafs الْأَمْوَامِ and مُطْمَنَّةٌ may ask you to do bad things. Illa ma rahim rabbi. Unless Allah sends his mercy. One of the function of mercy is to protect from nafs ammare. In series on understanding mercy, we explain this. So you see, someone you, like Yusuf alayhi salam managed to remain pious despite Temptations coming, invitations coming, even by force, by different kinds of plans. But he managed to remain pious and pure. Why? Because he asked Allah for help. Zulaikha <laughs> had. intention to have an affair with Yusuf. And Yusuf would have had also the same. Lawla and Ra'a Burhan Had it not that Yusuf had seen Burhan, a clear proof, proof from his Lord. So because he had this Burhan, he didn't have you know this desire or inclination or intention of going. So he didn't decide for haram. But if there was no burhan, proof, a kind of like vision, maybe he saw the malakuti side of this action. If you are able to see the reality or malakuti aspect of zina, you would see it's so ugly. You don't want to approach. Any haram, if we were able to see its real face, we would find that it's very disgusting. So, istaadha works. 
or in the case of Lady Maryam Salamullah alayha. In uh, some lectures about Lady Maryam, I have explained, and also in one lecture uh, about Tarbiya, I have mentioned. Quran says, Mother of Lady Maryam, Salamullah alayha, after Lady Maryam was born, she asked Allah to take care of this girl. Uizuha bik, vazurriyataha. O Allah, I ask you to give refuge shelter to Maryam and her progeny mina shaytan from Satan this is istaadha you can do istaadha for yourself you can do istaadha for your work you can do istaadha for your children especially when children are still very early stage of at very early stage of your life because if they are adults you can still ask Allah for help, but it very much also depends on them. But a newborn baby or a small child, then it's more a matter of parents' decision. And this is why Allah says, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ If I want to submit my 15, 20, 30 years old children to Allah, Allah may accept, but it very much depends on them. But a newborn child is innocent. A child who is not yet born even. And it's all at this stage relying on the parents. If you manage to make a deal with Allah and ask Allah to take care of your children at this age, and say, you know, you are in charge, I am at your service. Not that, you know, I don't want to work. I am going to do my best. But I cannot upbring my children without you. You are the main person in charge of Tarbi of my children. So the mother of Lady Maryam, she asked Allah to protect not only Maryam, but also progeny of Maryam. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيًّا Allah accepted Maryam in a beautiful way of accepting. Because when Allah accepts something, He does everything needed. Completes the job in a beautiful way. And grew her up in a beautiful way. It's Hassan means beautiful. Good and beautiful. Kabulan Hassanan, Nabatan Hassanan. And Allah made his prophet take care of Maryam. But Maryam exceeded in some aspects her guardian. To the extent that things happened to Maryam that Prophet Zakaria didn't know, <laughs> let alone being able to help Maryam with that, you know. So it was not because of help of Zakaria that food was coming to Lady Maryam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maryam herself had such a great relation with Allah that Kullama, every time, not just once, not few times, Kullama dakhala, every time Prophet Zakaria was visiting Lady Maryam in a place of worship, was finding next to her rizqan, some sustenance. Qala anna laki hadha, this, where is it coming this for you? Every time I come to you, for example, fresh fruits, especially fruits which are not fruits of this season. And Maryam is not going, you know, shopping, spending lots of time, you know, shopping and, you know, buying things that are not available, etc. Maybe she was not leaving even the temple, unless for necessary things. Where does this come? First of all, you don't go out. Secondly, this is not available in the market. 
If it is once, we say, okay, maybe someone gifted him. Maybe it's twice, maybe someone gifted. But every time. Then she said, قَالَتْ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ And then she said, إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَرْضُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah gives sustenance to those that He wills without حِسَابِ Without measuring. هُنَاهُ لَكَ دَعَوْ ذَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهِ This inspired Prophet Zakaria to again pray for having a son who would inherit him. So, Maryam Salamullah Alayha is a result, I'm not saying only this, but is a result of her mother's request from Allah for refuge. فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُّ After what? أُعِيذُهَا بِكْ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Or when this you know Archangel Gabriel Jibra'il or maybe Ruhu Al-Qudus manifested for Maryam as a man فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيَّا was a complete man very attractive beautiful man because angels can take form of human beings or even for example sometimes birds etc. you know philosophers say they can take any form maybe even animals birds human beings except dog and pig so Maryam Salamullah alayha was very, you know, pious lady. And she was you know, worried that although this person looks, although this person looks very nice, you know, looks a, like a God-fearing person, but still it's worrying because when two Namahram are together, even if one is Yusuf, even one is Maryam, you know, you have to be careful. You cannot take risk. So she said, "Inni a'udhu bil Rahman minka in kunta taqiyya." If you are a God-fearing person, which seems to be the case, I am asking Ar Rahman God to give protection. A God-fearing person, when he hears there is a lady who is also asking God for protection, knows that now if she is, you know, asking God for protection, so means that God is present there. And if she, this man has any ill intention, would be facing Allah. So for a God-fearing person, this is a great reminder, great, you know, kind of awakening. So, Esta'adha here also comes. Not only the mother of Mary did this, but Mary also herself is using Esta'adha. So, one of the things that we need to do with our children is Esta'adha. And teach them also to do Esta'adha in a, in a uh, kind of meaningful way. You know, you cannot do Esta'adha and put yourself in risk. You know, like for example, you know, we say, if God forbids there is, you know, for example, air strikes, go to shelter. So if you just say, I go to shelter, I go to shelter, I go to shelter, and you don't go to shelter, it doesn't work. When you say means you really mean that, and you are putting yourself in that. Then, the next thing is that we need to teach our children not to be in locations which are risky and we should not also put them in locations which are risky. For example, when they are very young, sometimes maybe parents are not careful about making them sleep in another room. Especially when father and mother want to sleep together and you know maybe have 
I'm relation, no child must be in that room. Even if it's a small child, it's very dangerous. And we have hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَّدِهِ لَوْ أَنَّ رَجُلًا غَشَ مْرَأَتَهُ وَفِي الْبَيْتِهِ سَبِيٌّ مُسْتَيْقَذْ يَرَاهُمَا وَيَسْمَعُ كَلَامَهُمَا وَنَّفَسَهُمَا مَا أَفْلَحَ أَبَدًا إذا كان غلاما كان زانيا أو جارية كانت زان إذا كان غلاما كان زانيا إذا كان أو جارية كانت زانية هذا الكافي so basically the, it means that Basically, it means that they should not uh, have rela marital relation when there is a child who may hear their voice or see them. Otherwise, this child in future may Allah, become someone who would be committing adultery or fornication, whether it's boy or girl. So it, it's very important to have separate bedroom or at least at certain times they should you know sleep separately also children should not sleep after a certain age in the same bed or on the same mattress they should s s sleep separately of course uh, if you have you know a son daughter that they are reaching, for example, you know, certain age. In the hadith, for example, says 10 years. You should separate the rooms, if possible. And but from even before that, you should separate the beds. Children should not sleep together after a few years. So in these second seven years, we need to observe that. For example, there is a hadith which says, this from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As-sabiyyu was-sabi Was-sabiyyu was-sabiyyah Was-sabiyyah to was-sabiyyah So whether there are two boys Or one boy, one girl Or one, two girls Yufarraqu baynahum fil madhaji' La ashra sani They should be sep uh, sleeping separately From year 10 Maybe even earlier But this is the last chance I mean it shouldn't be delayed from this so this is also very important. It c can avoid many problems. Also when, for example, they want to go to society, for example, the way girls should you know, walk and go to the public, boys, you know, for example, you know, the way go out, then relation with Namahram, with the strangers, all are very important. They should not put themselves in risk. They should not remain in the same place with no mahram alone. Or they should not get in conversations with no mahram, which is, you know, very, uh, you know, kind of uh, attracting. Especially girls should not be showing too much humbleness or kindness to no mahram. Because then they may think negatively about them and may think they can misuse them. Girls especially should be uh, when it comes to Namahram, they should be almost like an arrogant person. This not they are really arrogant, but takabbur here is good for women in the sense that they shouldn't show humbleness to the people so that they can think these are weak people, they can take advantage of them. One of the things we find about Prophet Yusuf is that uh, when Zuleikha uh, locked and closed all the doors and invited him and he said Allah. then Quran says وَاسْتَبَقَ bab verse 25 of Surah Yusuf وَاسْتَبَقَ so Yusuf didn't stay there Yusuf ran away to go out of course Zuleikha also followed him to keep him not to let him go and this is why 
she, you know, took the shirt of Yusuf from behind and the shirt was torn apart from behind. So Yusuf tried to run away from this uh, location, from this environment. You shouldn't, you know, go to risky environment and say, Inshallah, Allah will help me or I am a strong person. Even if you are Yusuf, don't put yourself into a risky situation. Why? Hadith says, you know, when there is a man and woman who are namahram in one place and there is no one else, shaitan is the third person. So we have to be very careful. Also, we should avoid befriending friends who encourage us to do these things. If you, uh, your girl has a friend that she says, you know, I have a boyfriend, I go to this gathering, and little by little it can affect your girl. Or your son has a friend who is like this, can affect. So you have to be very careful. The other method is that in addition to avoiding conversation with na mahram or you know making jokes with na mahram or you know presenting yourself to na mahram or being in a place lonely with na mahram or looking at pictures which are you know or movies which are you know stimulating or you know touching na mahram any kind of physical in, you know contact with na mahram in addition to these things which are for prevention we should also empower ourselves with remembrance of Allah. This is positive, constructive way. It's not just prevention. A strengthen yourself with remembrance of Allah, with fasting. If you are under pressure or your child is under pressure, there is no time for marriage or there is no suitable. Fasting can help a lot. Observing hijab, hijab not only as a code of dress, but as code of behavior and interaction with now mahram remembrance of death visiting the dead people remembering uh, especially day of judgment and how we are going to have eternal life this is a very short period of time all these things help us to be empowered i would like to end with a beautiful story from allama muhammad taqi ja'fari ridwanullah ta'ala alayh. He was a contemporary scholar. He died a few years ago. He has a very uh, useful commentary on Nahjul Balaghi, more than you know, 20 volumes. He has commentary on Masnavi by Modavi. He has many books. So when he was in Najaf for a study, then one day it was very hot, and some Taleb got together. One person, who was known to be very humorous, uh, said, I have brought a picture from one of the magazines of a beautiful lady. So said to those few people who were there, which of you prefers to live with this person, to be his wife, to meeting Amir al Mu'minin for a moment or prefers meeting Amir al Mu'minin for a moment to living with this woman, beautiful woman for her life. So this was a question. So some said Inshallah I will see Amir al Mu'minin when I die. So I prefer to live with such beautiful woman all my life. Allah Jafari was very upset. He was a young Taliban. He didn't even look at that picture because you know he was sending around the picture to see and then say what's your opinion. He went to his own room, Hojre, but it was very warm, so he just sat outside on a staircase and then went to sleep. Although it was not time of sleep, but sometimes you know you have to see something, so you go to sleep. It was meant to happen. In this dream, let me read for you exactly uh, what he says. So he says, 
I found myself in a rather big, large hall. And there were some of ulama of the past. And in the top place in Majlis, there was a like a bed or like a you know throne. Amirul Mumini was sitting on that. There was Gambar, there was Malik Ashtar. Amirul Mu'minin called me towards himself with my name, and he says, I eagerly went to, uh, uh, towards Amirul Mu'minin salam, and I saw myself in the arms of Amirul Mu'minin, and he says, I was so happy to be in that condition, and I found Imam Ali as described in the hadith, and then he says, I woke up. And he says, from the time that uh, I sat next to my hojir but outside on the stairs till I woke up was only about eight minutes. And he says, then I went back to the meeting of those people and I saw they are still, you know, busy with that picture. And I told them, Alhamdulillah, I've got result of my decision. So he said, he, because his idea was that you should not even compare seeing Amir al Mu'minin for a moment to living with you know, this woman, even if she is very beautiful. And then he says, from that time, my tawfiq increased. He became a mujtahid, he became a philosopher, he was a commentator of Nahjul Balagh, he was a great alim, mashallah. He had communications with some of the great philosophers of the West. So he says, that increased my doom. So why I should look at bad picture? Why I should, you know, put myself in risk? We can instead empower ourselves with remembrance of Allah, with seeing good things, with thinking about Ahlul Bayt Ali Musalam. So, inshallah, in the next session, we will start discussing the third seven years of Tarbiyah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.